Hi, this is my multi-part review of Vampire the Masquerade, the 20th anniversary edition. Now just a heads up, at the bundle of holding uh, site, there's currently a really good offer of Vampire the Masquerade 20th anniversary edition. I'm going to put a link in the description below, at the time of this review it's still up, so I, I would recommend that you take advantage of it if you want to get into Vampire or if you uh, want some of the source books that they offer there. Although I have yet to uh, review those source books, so I cannot give you my uh, opinion that they are going to be great and that you will enjoy them. Although I, I've uh, flipped through them and uh, mm, they seem pretty decent at the very least. So it's, it's just there in case you want to take advantage of that offer. So, in this part of the review, I'm going to give a bit of an introduction both of, uh, to my background related to Vampire the Masquerade and I'm also going to talk about the first part of the book. Vampire the Masquerade has been somewhat of a rite of passage uh, to me, that is, when I was uh, very young, in my early teens, um, you, uh, a lot of you already know about my uh, beginnings as a role player in my introduction to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons box set review. I'm going to put a link in the description below as well, so you can watch it if you uh, feel curious about that um, RPG history of mine. So, eventually, I thought that there could be a, a better way or more focused way of telling a story through role-playing games uh, in a different style when compared to Dungeons and Dragons. Because Dungeons and Dragons is, is great! Uh, I've done many reviews about different books about it and uh, I enjoy it uh, up to this very day, even if I play the first editions of Dungeons and Dragons or newer ones such as um, 3.5, Pathfinder, etc. So, I was still searching for uh, a new or different way to tell a story th through RPGs. And my first attempts at understanding different games were somewhat clumsy because I didn't know much about Vampire the Masquerade. I just saw some ads in magazines or some posters, but I didn't know much about it. And because uh, I, I was living in Mexico, uh, I didn't have uh, too many resources on how to play the game. I remember one time I went to uh, Walden Books and I saw Werewolf the Apocalypse and I uh, flipped through the book but I didn't understand exactly how to play it. I was thinking, what? There, there are no, uh, there is no information on grids and miniatures and how do you play this? This looks more like some sort of script for a, for a play or something. And so I didn't understand how to play it. But later on I kept uh, thinking about it. Eventually I did get Werewolf but my... Um, Initiation into the storyteller system was with Vampire the Masquerade. And one time I went to Las Vegas and again in a bookstore I saw the elegant book of Vampire the Masquerade and I, I flipped through it and I thought well, I still don't know how to play this but I'll, I'll take a risk, I'll take a chance. So I purchased the book and I started uh, reading it, studying it uh, in detail and as I went through it I, I understood a bit of what Vampire the Masquerade was all about. I still had a lot of um, obstacles uh, uh, finding a group or, or starting my own group because back then it was uh, the the Christian panic was still very powerful. So if uh, Christians if they saw you playing Dungeons and Dragons they would tell you oh you worship the devil and if they saw you playing Vampire the Masquerade you were the devil. So they would be like oh you want you want to be a vampire you evil evil man evil boy. So. Um, a funny thing is that th those same Christians uh, were constantly fighting against each other, they were uh, taking drugs, uh, a lot of them were alcoholics, they went clubbing and getting uh, girls and women pregnant, their whole life w was a mess, many of them uh, got into crime later on, so uh, in, in a sense they were basically just calling you a monster or a bad person for playing a, a game of vampires so that people wouldn't... Um, uh, fixate on them, or what would you say, uh, become aware of what uh, e what uh, type of evil they were actually doing. So that's part of the obstacle, in a way. that was uh, 
part of the major obstacle in getting players. And when you actually got players for Vampire the Masquerade, a lot of them uh, thought that it was uh, Vampires and Dragons or Dungeons and Vampires. That is, they thought that it played kind of like Dungeons and Dragons and they saw the different cities as dungeon as mega dungeons like they wanted to buildings and wanted to kill everything and take their stuff but of course those um, adventures and chronicles they uh, resulted in very chaotic outcomes because vampire the masquerade is a very sophisticated game there is uh, an entire uh, world a system of power the you know the camarilla the savat there is a a structure of governance within the world of vampires and they do not appreciate it when somebody is just wrecking havoc without paying respect to the prince or uh, all, all some other different factions so <laughs> the, ca the characters in those games um, had a very short lifespan to put it in a way and the other thing that also was somewhat difficult when trying to get players into vampire was a lot of them did not know how to play as a vampire beyond a certain fictional stereotype or perhaps even folkloric stereotype so every time they played as vampires they always acted like psychopaths like complete psychopaths and of course a vampire is a monster that's also true of vampire the mask uh, they, they tell you that in the back background of vampire the masquerade but there is a method to the madness of this monster so for example unless you belong to the clan of the uh, malkavian um, there's really no reason for you to act psychotic all the time so if they played as ventru or toreador or the tremere they, they didn't have an uh, it didn't seem logical or it didn't fit well within the context that they acted all psychotic all the time so a lot of player missed uh, players missed that uh, those finer points of vampire but when you actually got a group going and in fact i actually <laughs> i have played this rpg um, fewer times when compared to other rpgs but when you got a good game going it was incredibly awesome it was an uh, a really exciting, dark, mysterious experience. And I'm going to show you an image here of one of what I would consider the best online RPG store that have, has existed in Mexico. It, th this place was amazing. It, it's, it no longer exists. Sadly, the owners moved to some other projects, but when it was up, it was uh, a place where you could gather, they had a chat room and forums, you, you could basically build a room, a group, sorry, there quite easily. Um, and their service, service was top-notch, and their prices were, were also excellent. So I got a lot of White Wolf material from there, because I, at the time I didn't have uh, too much money and, and a credit card, so I, I needed uh, some place to get my, my books, and they... Uh, served the RPG community, the, the, the R Mexican RPG community, quite admirably. And so, um, I did have some of the most exciting and uh, romantic and dark moments playing Vampire the Masquerade. So now with this 20th anniversary edition, uh, I hope to uh, pay some sort of tribute to the greatness of this awesome uh, storytelling game. That's a better way to put it, a storytelling game, because as you will see, it differs quite a bit from a more some, from other uh, fictional RPGs. Now, let's talk about the quality of the PDF. The quality is quite superb. Everything is well organized and written. You have these awesome looking illustrations and photo montages. Some of those illustrations you will recognize from other source books. And some of them are completely new for this 20th anniversary edition. Everything, everything is fully bookmarked. And the cool thing is that this core rulebook contains a lot of additional material that you could only get from other source books in uh, past editions. So this is a very complete rulebook, even though there's a few things missing, like for example, the rules to create KTF, and we'll talk about those in some other parts of the review. But the quality is amazing. I think I only found like a very few typos. And considering this is like a 529-page uh, core book, 
it's quite acceptable. So uh, I'm really pleased with the quality. It's quite beautiful, and considering all of the illustrations of all of the uh, the material here, it, it loads quite quickly. It feels like a very light document. Now let's talk about the content. First, you have some extracts or opinions from different people who have played Vampire the Masquerade throughout the years, and it's really awesome because. Uh, you see how much people have been uh, touched in a positive way and uh, affected uh, by Vampire the Masquerade. It's like this advertisement that I, would, I was showing you of the Mexican online store. That It, it says, um, by becoming monsters, we understand what it is to be human. So Vampire the Masquerade teaches you a lot about the darkness that all of the people in this world have within them. And how that darkness can either control you or you can use it as a weapon or as power. So that's Vampire the Masquerade. It, it's a game that teaches you how to control that inner beast and uh, bend it to your will in a way. And then uh, we have an introduction. There is a lot of flavor to this document. You're, you're going to find different pieces of fiction related to the setting of Vampire. And uh, it's really easy to get immersed into this world of darkness. This is the old world of darkness. Don't forget, it has a very different flavor from the more recent world of darkness. So, at first you have an introduction of what this book is all about, but they do not tell you how to play a, a role-playing game or a storytelling game, to put it in better terms. Um, this book is somewhat geared towards veterans. Of course, you can. it's quite easy for you to understand how to play an RPG or a storytelling game by uh, searching around in different pages or uh, YouTube. So here they go straight to the point of what Vampire the Masquerade is. And they talk about a different um, how they handle different values in this book uh, that is concerning, for example, the metric system. And they talk about Vampire the Masquerade in its live action version because there are a lot of people who played, a, a, they, that is, the, they LARPed Vampire the Masquerade. They dressed up and they um, carried out all those uh, intrigues and, and chronicles in live, in, as a more live way, no pun intended, to represent those stories of uh, beings that are somewhat immortal but at the same time at times decadent pointless in in their plans and existence in different instances so vampire the masquerade is also quite flexible both in its theme and in the way that you play it it's quite easy to play it any way that you like you can play as villains you can play as heroes you can play as anti-heroes and you can play it around the table or you can play it inside a building. And so, what is Vampire exactly? They cover this quite well, um, dispelling different myths concerning vampires, at least when related to the setting of Vampire the Masquerade. So they tell you, vampires are immortal, but they can be killed. They just live forever as long as nobody tries to destroy them and they also need blood of course uh, to sustain themselves and they, they also detail the process of creating a vampire it's not like a plague that everyone who gets killed by a vampire becomes a vampire so that strays a bit away from the folklore of vampires this is more on the side of Anne Rice where you drain the blood of someone completely and you if you were a vampire and you feed that person uh, vampiric blood so that that person returns as a new monster and they also tell you the differences between vampires and for example demons because there is a somewhat of an ambiguous line there in that vampires are not as evil as demons and devils because they are not exactly looking to corrupt people unless that's the agenda of that vampire they're just trying to survive but because of their methods of survival they can seem quite demonic and monstrous because for example many things and we will get into further into that as we i go on with the other 
parts of the review, but a lot of vampires recognize that they are untrustworthy, that is themselves, they cannot trust uh, their inner self, they have a beast inside, so they cannot trust others in return. They look at the world as a sort of like a mirror when compared to their inner selves. And they realize that they are different and they are separated from the mortal world because the mortals represent more like uh, at times cattle. They are their, their source of substance and at times they are also a threat. Mm. But they do not consider like they form part of the mortal, mortal world and sometimes they become alienated from the world of vampires as well. So they realize that their existence depends completely on secrecy and control and so they become master manipulators. That's one of the reasons, like, like for example, uh, that vampires stay in cities and not in the wilderness. The wilderness is more the terrain or hunting ground of werewolves, who are usually physically superior to vampires, not all the time, but in a general sense, they are better at fighting up close and personal than vampires. Vampires are better at manipulating and controlling others, so they stay in the cities where they have more resources to do that. And so they, uh, you can see how vampires become quite alien as they become older, they become more powerful, but they see how life becomes uh, more and more cheap and they value life less, although blood is something that they are always searching for. So the most elder vampires are the, perhaps the most jaded and unfeeling, paranoid and more monstrous beings that you can encounter. I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can watch my review of Vampire Hunter D if you feel so inclined because I think that you will find some related themes there. They also tell you how vampires um, suffer damage from sunlight in, in a sense or although there are vampiric disciplines that will allow you to uh, mitigate this damage. Uh, they tell you about uh, how some vampires can be affected by some spiritual objects, but only if the person is uh, using true faith when brandishing such objects or symbols against them. And they also talk about what happens with vampires when they get a stake through the heart. They do not die, but they uh, get paralyzed. And they give you uh, just a very vague introduction to the types of powers that vampires can wield. And they also talk about how, for example, vampires do not feel, feel almost no pleasure from sex. That is, their uh, true pleasure comes from draining blood from uh, the kiss, as they call it, that is taking a bite out of, of a victim. And that also creates an intoxicating and erotic experience for the victim. So vampires um, are almost completely driven pleasure-wise. Uh, because of their, uh, through their th thirst for blood. And they also give you details on, on the hunt and the nocturnal world of vampires. How they uh, are constantly moving behind the curtains, manipulating entire nations uh, through this ancient war that they have, the Jihad. This is a battle for supremacy and there's, it's surrounded from, by many uh, mysteries, conspiracies, hidden agendas. All of the vampires participate in the jihad in why, one way or another, and even if they try to stay out of uh, the jihad, they still get pulled into it or manipulated into it by other vampires. And there's also this fear, somewhat like a mythic, uh, perhaps superstitious fear of Gehenna. So Gehenna is the vampire apocalypse. The lore of Vampire the Masquerade is uh, firmly rooted in uh, Jewish mythology. So you can see how there are these anti-Delubian vampires, uh, some related uh, to the, some of the most powerful biblical creation myths. So um, it's going to be, it's always a source of uh, complications and this discrepancy and disagreements if this Gehenna is actually going to happen. Some vampires think that it's inevitable, that this apocalypse is going to happen, and some others consider it like a fairy tale. But there is this story, as I was telling you, that the antediluvians and even Cain himself will rise and they will uh, devour vampires and humans alike. I also like it that at the start uh, of this chapter, they... Uh, um, what would you say, preserve or, or keep the, the structure of telling you how to use the book 
of Vampire the Masquerade when compared to former editions. That was also that was really helpful when I was first learning Vampire the Masquerade. They uh, tell you exactly how to use the, the book and give you source material, different books, Dracula, interview with the vampire. And of course, they also mention Vampire Hunter D here as well. Uh, so even though you this is your first time playing Vampire the Masquerade, I think you will have no trouble at all in understanding how to, to play this awesome storytelling game. And this is going to be the end of part one of my review. It's probably going to take me a few weeks to complete this review, but I really want to, to give this uh, game the treatment it deserves. So I hope you will join me for the next part in this review. And uh, thanks for watching. See you later.